All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown. Oh, my God. Kim Petras, how are you doing? Hi. I'm so happy to be here. I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing amazing, actually. Your life must be, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you know, your life is pretty wild as is being the pop star that you are. Mm, but, yeah. man, with this song, you know, your new track, you know, Jesus Was a Rock Star and Un- Unholy, mm-hmm. I mean, right? Yeah. And, like, I feel like they match each other so well too it's really nice yeah no but the sam song has been like such an insane blessing and something i've just never experienced and uh i'm just super grateful to sam for you know sending me the song it happened over dm so uh and we've been talking for years about wanting to do a song together so it was just kind of the perfect moment and just been kind of blown away and really like grateful for like all the like support it's gotten you know from radio to streaming like it's it's really amazing like it's incredible so i just feel blessed to be a part of that i was telling i was telling kim off air that i walked into some i'm not typically in the music meetings but i kind of stumbled into a music meeting and there was this chart and graph on a wall with all these songs and numbers and whatnot and i noticed the song at the top whatever the i don't know what i don't know what it was measuring numbers of something (laughs) (laughs) but the song at the top was way ahead of everybody else and i was like what's which one is that it's unholy i mean just good god it's been such a good child to me. Yeah, no, no doubt. Kim, you posted a little while back. Um, you, I think the post was, I love being a pop star. Yeah. A video of you dancing. I think it was in the San Diego <laughs> baseball stadium, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what do you love about, I want to hear your side of, you yeah. love this. Yeah, totally. Well, it's all I've ever wanted to do. You know, I, I love pop since a young age. Studied it, started writing it, became a songwriter, became an artist. And uh, kind of created this, carved out this little world in my my fan base that just completely gets it, who are as obsessed with pop as me, you know? So right. it doesn't really feel uh, in, in any way like there's ever, you know, um, I don't know, too much pressure to just like be, you know, kind of be with my fans. Like that's like my favorite thing in the world. And I kind of built my life around that. So yeah, I've I've been doing this for like five years or something that I've been, you know, playing just club after club after club from like 10 people to 100 people to the thousands of people and it's just been such a cool like ride and I feel like I kind of did it the old school way and uh here we are and you know it was kind of just like a matter of time before this happened I guess and it's awesome that it did it's I mean it's good to hear you say that because from the outside looking in being a pop star seems pretty awesome you know yeah (laughs) what's the hate right by the way okay that sound you just did. Yeah. Me and a fan, uh, a huge fan of yours, this guy right there. Yes. We were talking I'm about that. I'm obsessed with you, by the way. <laughs> Everybody loves Ronnie. Everybody. Uh, that sound you just made, where did it come from and at what percentage of songs do you say that in? Uh, I'd say like 80% of songs I say it in. Um, it really just randomly happened. I wanted like my j j j j j r, you know, like I wanted like <laughs> like a two thousands like tag, and I don't know. I usually like on stage, I just go to be hype. I go like woo woo woo, and then like one time I just put an ah behind it, and the genius of that started, and it will never leave, and it's here forever, and like all my fans like have the craziest uh, merch and uh, scream every uh, so isn't that not I mean the, yeah. <laughs> the things like people have meetings on branding and marketing and that probably happened by accident right? yeah no for sure yeah it just like was my little hype thing I would do to get people to jump at shows and then yeah and also I, I guess like Mario in like Super Mario kind of makes that sound a little bit if you do like a certain combo like right. some fans have like tweeted me and I was like oh maybe I just played too much Mario as a kid you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> subconscious somewhere in there but but yeah, Ooh, uh. it's all. Yeah, I think the, the best things <laughs> happen completely by accident. OK, uh, Slut Pop came out earlier this year, Feb of 22, obviously. Sure did. Th- things went <laughs> nuts with this thing. Uh, before I move on to new music and everything else, what, what do people need to know about, you know, this EP? Ooh, um, Slut Pop is uh, uh, not safe for work. Like not gonna be on the Disney Channel anytime <laughs> yeah, soon. Definitely not. Even though, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's just you know it's its own thing. Same like I did a Halloween uh, kind of mixtape called Turn Off the Light, which is just a themed experience from top to bottom. And the same way with Slap Pop, like all the songs bleed into each other. They're all very Euro house inspired and kind of the music that I grew up wanting to like rave to because I grew up in Germany, so there was a lot of techno, a lot of. Uh, 
electronic raves and like I was like when I grow up I want to be like the Venga Boys or something you know like, oh, wow. uh, yeah so um, I just wanted to make something like that but kind of just with a really uh, slutty um, lyrical persona and so yeah it's just it kind rocks, of dude. an alter ego thank you so much yeah I, it has like a cult like fan base which is great already so <laughs> I'm obsessed like all the um, yeah twinks that show up in uh Slap pop shirts. It's, it's amazing. It, yeah, if you guys are, are all familiar <laughs> with it, jump on it. Uh, of course, that that came out in February. February, uh, yeah, sometime in February. Kim, uh, unholy. Good God, this song is just absolutely massive. So, give me a backstory. Working with Sam, how'd you get the song? Any kind of details on unholy? Yeah, um, unholy came along by DM. Like Sam just DM'd me the song, and I listened to it and. Uh, was immediately kind of like, okay, this is incredible and it's so new and fresh like for you as well. And I really felt like I could add like my my own thing to it. So yeah, we met up and we recorded it at the uh, Capitol Studios, which is like this amazing building here in LA and it has like a huge like... I heard you guys recorded it in Jamaica. No, uh, what, what actually, that? that's funny. Um, uh, Sam wrote it in Jamaica. Oh, gotcha. And then we, uh, after that, linked up here in LA. Uh yeah, and recorded it at the Capitol, my verse at the Capitol Studio, but the song existed without me gotcha. in the beginning. Yeah, so I'm just kind of really lucky and happy to be on it, and I feel like, uh, you know, and we talked about collaborating for years before that, so I, I've been sending Sam songs, Sam's been sending me songs, and it's just been like, you know, so all these songs, about time. All yeah. these songs <laughs> back and forth, like you you would hear one song from Sam and go, nah, that's not, not right for me, and Sam would send one to you and be like ah you, so you get you basically reject each other for a little while in, yeah. in a friendly way of course <laughs> <laughs> but when, when you like i don't like this but but when you know it's just like you know for a good collaboration i feel like <laughs> it needs to be like it needs to make sense like it does it, it can especially with someone who i respect as much as sam i don't want to just like throw something together that like you know like isn't like what sound I'm like good at or what where I can really like take it somewhere else you know like I just don't want to just put two names together like I think this is really a song where we both kind of hold our own in it and right. uh, do our own thing on it and uh, I just respect Sam so much that I was like I want this to be right you know so even though it might seem like rejection it's actually like we both want this to be right and like should we try this should we go in this direction like we're kind of figuring it out together so when you heard it for the first time you know, mm. the music before you before you put a word on it. Mm. When you heard this, were you like, damn, like you knew this was something different, something special? Yeah. I mean, what I what I kind of judge music on always is just like, does, does it make me feel anything? Do I get excited? Do I want to listen to it again? You know, do I think it's cool? Uh, that's always like my <laughs> right. my one judgment. And this one I thought was extremely cool. You know, I think, so I, I was like, right. so I was like, you know what? Like, I'd be jealous if uh, I wasn't a part of this song. You know, I'd be like, oh, damn. You know, like I, I was like, yes, this is the right song that we both need to do a thing on. And uh, yeah, Kim, you love your fans. They're amazing, beautiful, wonderful people. Uh, but I, I love those stories where those fans go a little over the edge, a little extra. For example, have you... Uh, come across fans i'm sure you have with like fan tattoos like kim petras yeah. tattoo well, give me some of those stories because I, fi- I think that that shows i mean like i've got a michael jackson tattoo yeah i love mj yeah give, yeah. give me some of that you know yeah love. it's there's a lot of the turn off the light hand that people tattoo anywhere honestly um, <laughs> <laughs> um i've signed uh all kinds of body parts and people have yeah you know they go ham and like <laughs> honestly like i'm just like honored i'm just like yeah i'll Sign your d- and whatever else. Like, what's the, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll believe it. Messer. What's the what's the most awkward thing you've had to? Uh, well, not you, you. You've signed. A d- you don't get it. <laughs> now, do do they do they end up getting the tat? Because sometimes an autograph turns into a tat. Or? I'm unsure. I feel like I might have blocked that person. <laughs> God, oh my! I, I can't imagine that that awkward moment where this person's like, "Hey, do you mind?" And you're like, "And sure enough, I mean, you know what? Were they more shocked than you, or are you more shocked than them?" Um, I was like, at any moment now that's going to happen. Like, I I mean, I've been a club, like, before I, like, really took off and stuff. Like, I was really kind of a club kid in New York, you know, and there's 
you know, insane things happen. Right. You know? So uh, I feel like I kind of come from like a little <laughs> rowdy world and like the PC music scene and like warehouse raves and things like that, you know, and I think uh, it was just part of like, or, or it is just part of kind of being like, you know, part of like a fun party culture. I, I so want to follow up if, if that person that got the autograph down there. I know, me too. I want to know. know yeah, was up. it a tattoo? Yeah, what, I want to <laughs> see. Uh, I mean, don't, don't post it, but, uh, you know, I want to, I just want to hear an update. Did you turn that into a tat? And that must have been painful if so. We need to know. We need, we got to know. With this, you know, new music and whatnot, all, everything happening so quick. Um, are we, maybe it's too early or maybe it's just right. Tour talks. Yeah. Are we, uh, what, how's that going or is it going? Never too early. Never. Uh, I mean, definitely, definitely next year. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm doing a couple of jingle balls in December, which I'm super stoked about. Nice. Uh, and, uh, yeah, can't, can't wait. And then I think like next year, um, soonish, uh, tour because like, it's like honestly like all that I want to do. And I'm like at a point right now where I've just been like kind of flying around finishing songs and uh, just came from Sweden and wrote songs there. And like Sweden, there's just so many amazing pop songs that come from there. So I'm just really stoked. And I feel like I got like a new lesson in songwriting. And I, yeah, I have like all my singles ready, um, but there's still songs that I'm kind of like following up to completely finish. Uh, but yeah, the beginning of next year, I'm just going to drop a lot of music because I have just too much at this point and I got to get touring and I got to wrap up about my album. It's kind of like hard to make me stop, <laughs> make music like 500 songs. You got to pick yeah. 15, you know? Yeah. It, do you love, I mean, obviously you love performing yes. clearly. Uh, do you love road life being like tour life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, re I really, really like it. I feel like my like team is kind of my family over the years, you know, they're with me just all the time and we just have so much fun, um, uh, you know, seeing different places, trying different restaurants and then seeing the fans every night. Um, uh, and even though it's kind of like, you know, there's days where I literally like can't speak and need to just vocal rest and I have this little app where I just like make my phone say it for me, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, oh, which is, you know, it's it's awkward, but it like, yeah, no, I, I love just being... You know, and I'm kind of obsessed with just being like on a hundred percent every show and making sure that I know how to rest my voice and all of that. Okay, it's a fun thing for me. Random question. Okay, when you uh, and I'll wrap the we'll, we'll go to break after this. But um, do you have a lozenge that you use like on? Because uh, uh, like for example, your your voice is hoarse. Yeah. Do you have a lozenge that you? Because Avril Lavigne came through. I don't know, a month two ago, whatever, and she gave mm -hmm. me these honey lozenges. Are they called like pastilles? They're right. right. I got them right here. Mm. This is the one. This is what she gave me. Oh my god, amazing! And they, uh, she, she said, try these, and I'm, it's not an endorsement. I'll get it done. But it, it changed my life because she says, Jojo, yeah. do you get hoarse when you're on the radio? And I'm like, well, yeah, sometimes. And she yeah. just whipped these things out of her bag, and it's like magic, you know. So do you have something yeah. along those? What's your thing? Um, uh, I, I vocal rest. I mean, there, there is like this thing called something pastilles. It's like in a little gold box. It's like what kind of everyone does there there is throat coat tea uh, that and, stuff is gross though it's i'm not a big yeah, licorice you know i mean dude. i'm i'm okay with it because <laughs> like if i have to sing like you know i'll shut up i'll drink so much tea and just do anything to like get that done with but there's also like a there's a humidifier uh that you kind of can carry with you uh if it's if it's really bad <laughs> and uh i mean uh yeah, definitely like humidify the room and things like that. Yeah, man, that's that's how you do it when you're serious business, man. For yeah. sure. Uh, you talked about new music. Give me everything about I me. Mean, I'm sure some things are top secretish or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, what 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 can you say about the new music aside from the single, which we'll get to? Is there like mm -hmm. a crazy? Like you said like a hundred songs recorded. I'm putting words in your mouth. Yes. And you get a. They're all. Is it <laughs> is the album pretty much done basically? Um, uh, it's yes. I'm, I think the skeleton for it is completely done. Um, but it's really just kind of picking the songs that I want to put extra focus on. And I've, I have all my singles done now, so that's exciting. Um, but now it's kind of time to get the rest to the point where I want it to be as well, because I've just been kind of like really focused on, uh, you know, the single, like trying to beat every single song because, um, you know, I always want to put my best foot forward right. and um uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> that's such a funny phrase um uh, anyways um yeah so i feel like uh, yeah i feel like the structure is there i'm just finishing stuff and definitely like beginning of next year i should be able to drop it i know fans are really mad at me that i that i'm not done yet but i feel like 
you know, just I've learned something from Unholy that sometimes it just doesn't matter because there were a lot of people who were like, why isn't it dropping? It's going crazy on TikTok. And it was like, relax, like, you know, just trust in us that we've like, that we, we're thinking of you and we want this to be the best experience for you guys as possible, you know? Um, so that's, that's always my priority. So I just want to make sure that I have everything ready before I tease my fans because they get really upset if like I tell them something's happening and it's not, you know? So I'm just Man. trying to really be extra prepared this time. I've, I've talked to quite a few artists and I've learned the word when it comes to fans, the word soon is the devil because if yeah. you say it's coming soon and it doesn't come tomorrow, yeah. then soon is like you lie. And it's just, yeah, it's, they like bang their heads against the wall <laughs> and start ripping out their hair. Oh, man. I guess, <laughs> yeah. God, right. And then, uh, when well, you've got so, here's the impossible, all these songs, even the ones that, you know, like you've written, I don't know how many songs and recorded yeah, the skeleton's yeah. done, but to go from, I don't know, 70 songs, 40 songs to 12, 15, mm. whatever. That's impossible to narrow things down. I mean, it's just got to be the worst because you love them all. There's a, I mean, but then you have to, you have to pick, pick which babies it's you good. like the best. Yeah, you know? no, for sure. It's, it's, it's literally killing your babies. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, me- <laughs> it's messed up. Um, but you got to do it because like, if you don't do it, then it's sloppy, you know, it's just like too many ideas I think just can't, you know, fit onto a project for it to still feel kind of cohesive. And so I'm kind of picking from like, all the best parts. Like I'm picking a bridge from this song to put in this song where I got the verse from another song. And like at the end, it's kind of like the best parts of the songs bleed into like the new songs. I bet your, you lap, your laptop must so be you full of craziness, right? Narrow them, narrow them, narrow them. Uh, yeah. And we're almost, we're almost there. Yeah, definitely. My, my, yeah. Your my, laptop is my, full of madness. All my files is <laughs> insane. Yeah. And yeah, I don't text my songs anymore to people. Just wanted to put that out there, but yeah, uh, be that's led to a lot of madness before. So and, and I'm he, really like I'm trying to keep my stuff organized now and like have everything not be too insane. But it's it's so much. You're so passionate about it's your so music. Hard. You're so I mean I, I just you're in love with it. I just, yeah, it's just such a it's a rush to watch you be in love with this. Like you're, you're ah, uh, thank you. And, and a, a final question on this. I keep saying final, but do you not text stuff because just to keep it organized, or did did a leak happen at some point? Mm. or both no i just feel like there were too many versions of stuff out there and oh, then everyone gotcha. just had like a million different versions and then uh people got confused and then people got mad because like i used to send my songs to my fans to kind of gauge you know uh which right. ones are their favorites and like i didn't really care if it leaked and stuff but then people got upset if i changed anything because it got demoitis and then my fans would yell at me like <laughs> why didn't you put this ad in there and uh, you know so i i unfortunately had to stop i feel like i'm through that phase now unfortunately because it was honestly great like just like when a fan would be like you should really harmonize that ad lib like that would oh, slap wow, okay. you know and I would be like I'll try it you know and then I wouldn't do it and then it would be like wow <laughs> 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 oh <my God. laughs> yeah it was on some Annabelle Kim if Jesus was a rock star yes give me everything what do I need to know ah uh, if Jesus was a rock star the lyric is I'd want to be just like him uh, so it's honestly like kind of a, a deep one for me. I kind of like had a hard time with religion, I think in my life because I, I'm trans and I, you know, kind of, I don't know, the pandemic made me think about religion and never really fitting into it and kind of wishing like, ah, oh, I kind of wish I did fit into some kind of, you know, right. uh, so something to believe in. And uh, I just like kind of believe in the universe and like earth and all of that. But I, I'm not part of a religion. And sometimes I'm like, what would that be like? Uh, and so that song is kind of wondering about that. And uh, yeah, it's also kind of a choose your own experience uh, song. I think you can kind of read into it a lot. So I kind of don't want to say too much so that it doesn't, you know, I, I don't want to dictate what it means to you. Because I feel like it's one of those songs that you just kind of put your personal feelings into and make it your own. At least for, for me, it's like that. And for like my team and uh, the people who's, who have heard it. And I wrote it with Max Martin. It's my first Max Martin song. And I have been such a super fan of Max since I was like a kid. Like I remember like looking at the credits on like Backstreet Boys CDs and Britney Spears CDs and just everything's Max Martin. And like, who is he? And looking up interviews and like, <laughs> you know, like looking at like, 
just his kind of philosophy of why everything he puts out is up to this incredible standard. And uh, I'm just a huge admirer of that and of uh, that skill and just like... I was like, I want to like eat your brain, you know, like I want to just like know everything that you know. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and I feel like I got some really valuable tips. And uh, yeah. It's funny you talk because I'm, I'm friends. With- <laughs> but like I also wrote it, you know, it was like Max was like, yeah, that's good. You know, like that's all you try, needed was try, a, a, or, or good try again. I don't like that cadence. You know, it's kind of like. <laughs> back and forth like but i like it and it's it's really cool to collaborate with someone who you just really respect and you're just like all focused on the song being good you know i'm, I'm friends with the backstreet boys and they say the Aye. same thing yeah and and they love mac like I, i've never been in a studio with max martin but he does he has some kind of voodoo i don't know what it, you could maybe obviously you know yeah but something something special so you know yeah for by sure. the way speaking of religion i have a a, a a statement stuck in my head from somebody told me a long time ago uh they said uh he believes in God, but he doesn't always believe in the people that claim they work for God. Yes. That's kind of where I'm at with all that mm. stuff. So is that, is, are you similar kind yeah. of in that along? For sure. I, I completely agree. I think, uh, I, yeah, I, I fit into that category for sure. Whatever because, that means, you know? Yeah. 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 I just, I just think that, you know, religion should include everyone. And that's my only thing. Yeah. hundred percent. Kim, two part question. First of all, think, uh, over all your performances, all, every single one of them. What do you consider your best live performance ever? And then the complete flip of that, what do you consider your worst? I mean, one was yeah. just about perfection. One was just straight to hell. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, my, my, be- my best performance ever, uh, just because of the insane memory of it, um, I was doing Ladyland in Bushwick, New York, and uh, it's like a gay party. And it, I remember Sophie was there, who's this incredible artist who uh, passed away and who was my friend. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and uh, I just remember it poured rain like all night, but I still went on and like everybody stayed out and like pouring rain and like i sang my song can't do better um uh, for everyone and i was it was just so magical and just so like incredible that all these people were down to go that hard and just be completely drenched and um uh, yeah and kind of sharing the stage with all my friends and uh, I have a lot of people that are really special to me and have helped me a lot like a lot of DJs in New York who have played my songs before anyone else you know who are just like for life I'm so grateful for. Right. And that night stands out to me as being just feeling wise the best, even though probably there's, there were some, you know, flat notes or whatever, but I was just so in the moment and I, that's what it's all about for me. I just want to be in the moment and forget about everything else with my fans. So I would say that's my best performance. Um, uh, and my worst one was uh, at the YouTube Streamy Awards. <laughs> <Got it>. <laughs> <Here> <laughs> but like, it's not their fault, you know, so I feel like I can say it. <laughs> it's just like, I was so, I was flying around. My voice was gone. I had like a steroid shot. It like made me like aggressive and like mad at myself. Oh, and God. <laughs> it was so bad. Like it was just really bad. And the whole, like my whole performance, it was just like cursed. And I just like remember crying after. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Like they were like supposed to be like little, like I was performing icy and there was supposed to be like ice, uh, icicles and ice mountains behind me. And my creative director at the time brought like these tiny, tiny, tiny ice mountains and it looked so bad <laughs> and i just looked giant next to them and it was just like uh you're pissed off even before uh, you got on stage yeah no that. i still can <laughs> really bad i wake up in the middle of the night thinking of those little icebergs <laughs> somebody delete that video wherever it's at god all right kim petrus no it's okay it's not, it's not it's my fault i didn't show up for y'all youtube streaming awards sorry oh god <laughs> But you can laugh about it now. Thank God. That's yeah. so, you know. I, I, for some reason, we t- I ask this question quite a bit, and the 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 disaster stories is always the one we 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 laugh about the most because it's just you know. Yeah. At the time, you're like, oh, it's the worst. But now it's like, man, that was a moment. You know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's I, I I laugh about every bad moment. I I just I love all the bad stuff that needs to happen to make something good. Amen. Kim, you said uh, I don't know when you said this. You said moving to L.A. This countdown is we're a national countdown. We're, we're everywhere, all over the place. <laughs> yeah. But I hear people say, you know, I'm, I'm based in L.A. You yes. are, too. Yes. I hear people say so many terrible things about L.A. I want you know, and you said moving to L.A. was one of the best decisions you ever made. Talk about what's good about 
Los Angeles yeah. and why people need to come see us. Yeah, totally. Not I'm, too many people because there's not enough traffic, but you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, please, no. <laughs> the traffic many. is so bad. Ah. I, it's, it's, a, it's a magical place with really magical people. And I think once I moved here, I really started finding people who I felt like, you know, I kind of like were my soulmates. Like not as like a romantic thing, but just like people that I just really get and connect with and who are friends for the rest of my life and I think that's a huge reason for me to to be in LA um, uh, is honestly the people and the amazing friendships that I've made here so it's more the people um, uh, but also there's just like I love that there's like Universal Studios like right in the middle of it. I love all the, I love all the history. Like the Marilyn Monroe used to stay here in this room. This is the pink room, and you know the, the Magic Castle. Like there's just so many like absurdities and like odd things in LA. It's fun, you know. It's just like it's kind. It kind of has like it has a lot of spooky history. It has a lot of movie stuff and yeah there's just something about it and people can't leave it and uh, hotel california it's, yeah yeah and by the way people think we people think we go to the beach because i guess that's what they see oh about my God. i haven't been to the beach and i don't know how long i mean yeah. do you go to the beach at all or i i did twice which is more than i've ever done but just because <laughs> like this year i went twice but yeah i'm i mean i'm just always like in a basement in a studio like <laughs> locked away <Right. laughs> so i i'm really not here for like the good weather or the beach or any of that like i literally am like always inside which explains how pale i am um uh, Same. And <laughs> join the club i'm a vampire <laughs> um uh, and yeah uh, so that's that. But the people here and the the adventures in LA are magical, and you can experience them anywhere else. And I will stand by that. Kim, uh, I think you know this about me. We talked a little bit before we went on there. I, I am obsessed with the paranormal, ghost, UFOs, everything in between. I've got a podcast called Paranormalish. I am way off the deep end, and this is not just a Halloween thing or whatever. This is a year twenty four seven. Have you had a paranormal encounter? Um, I never have, which I'm so, so mad at because I just like, I hear all these amazing haunted stories in my whole life. I, like since I was a kid, I was like, I want to get haunted. Like I was like, <laughs> I want that to happen to me so bad. And I want to see aliens and I, like all that stuff was so cool to me. I watched horror movie, movies way too early, was like obsessed with horror movies, obsessed with Halloween and still no paranormal activity. And I'm just really mad at the universe. And I have been manifesting something to happen for forever and it's not not happening and i need help okay well so. <laughs> uh, tour tour coming next next year yeah obviously you know mm-hmm. at some point um what are your thoughts on because they're going to schedule some nice hotels for you obviously all over the all over the country mm. but there's always a hotel even including the nice ones mm-hmm. that have they they a lot of them have a room don't go in there because so-and-so happened in there yeah the the, the Rumor here, rumor there. Would you consider, you know, staying in one of the requesting and staying in one of the haunted rooms somewhere on tour next year? Yeah. Okay. Most people tell me no. If you, <laughs> yes. Uh, Let's if, do it. Yeah. If uh, if if you do, bank whatever happens. You know, obviously remember it. And I would love to, you know, connect back up at some point for for a variety of reasons. Of okay, course, amazing. I, yes. I want to hear what happens. You know, because let's I mean, do it. And, and the reason I ask artists this a lot because can you guys, I can I bring like a friend? Do whatever, okay, whatever you want to do. Just make sure they don't. You know, they they have to be kind of into it too. I mean, obviously, you yeah. bring whoever you want. But no, it, I'm gonna just terrify yeah. someone like, <laughs> who has sure, no idea. Yeah, yeah that will, that will cut. Okay, cool. And keep your phone handy so if anything happens, you can kind of you know get the get the video rolling. I mean, if we're gonna we're gonna catch something, and we're gonna when you come back next time, it. full report, right? I'm fully yes. God, okay. You have no idea how many people tell me not only no but hell no. They're yeah. like yeah. Kim well, Pet- that's good. Like people like their lives, you yeah. know. I just yeah. I forgot to ask you this new album which is coming out. Um, we don't have a date yet. Mm-hmm. Not gonna say the word soon because fans get all crazy. I know, never say soon. Is there a title in mind? Don't say mm-hmm. it. If, but is is or can you say it? Uh, uh the, probably not. No, I, no, yes, no, no, yes. I'm no. getting three no's and one yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna stick with uh, no for now. But it's three words and they're cool words. I can say that much. No, but it's like, um, it's just kind of you know it's definitely like extravagant it's not a boring title it's definitely like says a lot about the entire album and uh yeah i think it's a really cool overarching theme that like i don't i don't know if people expect it from me but it's definitely music that doesn't sound like anything i've made so that's 
really exciting and uh yeah i just like i'm super stoked to show people kind of more uh of myself this time i mean i just signed to republic records now you know and it's uh like it's kind of go time with republic and they kind of have given me all the time that i needed to make all the music that i wanted to make with all the people that i wanted to work with and yeah so it's really like the pressure's on it's a debut you know my debut album with republic and uh i just want to do it right and i'm really grateful for the entire team at republic um for making it happen and yeah let's do this hey when you when let's do this when you sign the contract for republic you know mm -hmm. that's kind of a big moment you know who like just curious just the simple the simple notes who was in the room were you in a uh, like a conference room was it a actual pen was it a digital signing was it champagne yeah no it it, it wasn't it was uh me and my creative creative director and my hairdresser and i just kind of casually <laughs> that was it. It. <laughs> yeah it was just like let's print it out just, you need to sign this you know the thing is like the deal had been like for years before that like i've been talking to republic like just they were checking in every now and then like are you ready do you want to sign to someone and i was like i really enjoy being independent and i was kind of just starting to play these like big venues uh and like selling out stuff and i was like i don't know if this is the right moment or where i like need it because when i come into republic i want to be a priority you know i don't want right. to be like one of those artists that you you know just like sign and then like well go your own way but now you also can't release those things that you're passionate about because there's pressure on everything you ever release you know um so it's definitely like a tricky thing because i loved putting out halloween music which is something that people aren't like yeah this is gonna be a huge success you know <laughs> and like slut pop like no one's gonna be like yeah this is this is your first and they still let me put that out but with no expectations and i was just like just let me put out things i love you know right now but now it's kind of time to uh yeah drop this music and really be serious about it and yeah well congrats give a real debut yeah congrats on everything She's you debutante. just said <laughs> I mean, debuter you know girl. what? De whatever de <laughs> debut deep de whatever you just said. Yes, and debutante debuter girl. Debutante. My next single. <laughs> that's definitely not. Definitely please not. tell me that's not the album please, title. No, no, no. You, 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 you. Everything you just said though. Huge congrats. It's a big deal. Congrats on everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. What artist or album, or even what song, changed your life? Mm. Wow. I'm a huge. Oh, oh my God. It's, a, it's loaded. Um, I get it. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it, it, I feel like there's so, so many, but I would probably say, um, believe by Cher for some reason, just like the auto tune vocal, just like, I was like, I'm going to make music. Like in that moment, I was just like, I think just Cher in general, I was just like so obsessed with Cher. Did I read and, that? Do you, are you going to, do you want, well, clearly you want to do something you'd love to, who wouldn't, but uh, mm -hmm. have you ever pursued any sort of collab there or mm, no no also i haven't met Cher. i think i would like freak out i yeah also madonna i mean like like a prayer for example or uh don't tell me or just confessions on a dance floor that entire album like madonna madonna's way of light album you know daft punk like for the first time hearing wow. daft punk was a huge moment for me kind of the ed banger scene in paris like Uffy changed my life you know like uh, justice sa changed my life. Not saved my life. That's a little intense for justice. <laughs> um, uh, changed my life. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's so many moments and albums that are just so dear to me. Also Charlie XCX. I mean, honestly, like getting on a Charlie XCX song as early, like as I did was really cool because like I had just dropped one song and she was like, you're cool. Come jump on this song with me. And then I'll never, no. Oh my God. <laughs> and, I'll never, uh, and I'll never forget. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. Um, and of course, Unholy. Unholy completely changed my life and it's crazy. And I wake up and it's like number one since 18 days. And I'm like, this is nuts. Like, it, I never expected that. And uh, I'm, I just love Sam so much. So much. So much. So much. Oh my God. I'm giving Julia Fox. Uh, so much. <laughs> no. I love that. I love you, Julia. Sorry. A lot of success so far. The sky's the limit, yes. you know. So true. Uh, let's go back, like family, like your your old school inner circle since day one, family, friends, what's their reaction to what's going on? They're proud. You know, they've seen 
how not easy it was. Like they've seen me, you know, make demos and play them demos every day just in my room since I was 12 and writing jingles in the beginning for commercials and uh, landing my first like uh, telecom commercial and being like so proud and getting like $5 and being like, yes, you know, <laughs> and uh, then, uh, you know, signing to a publishing company, writing with artists in uh, London and LA. And, uh, you know, I, I made like a whole album with Jojo. That was a huge deal to me because her voice is like incredible. Not and- me, the singer. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> with you. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Right, right, right. Sorry. Uh, it was so good. It was great. <laughs> I love JoJo. Um, yeah, but yeah, it, it's just kind of like they've seen the process and that it really was like my entire life and eat up my entire life. So they're just like, thank God she finally, you know, got oh, cool. some, got a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I think relief for everyone. Everyone's like, okay, she had a point. Yeah. Same question to you. What's your reaction to all the stuff that's been happening? I mean, over- well, exciting, overwhelming, all the above. Yeah, I mean, I um, I feel lucky. Like, I feel, I feel like if this is like a freak accident to happen, you know. And uh, I, I just really want to say to like other artists and encourage other artists because like just keep making good music and stay doing it and don't, you know, don't question yourself if you're good. Like the timing just needs to line up and a freak accident needs to happen. That's just the way music works. You know, just that one song that people stick to and cling to and immediately are obsessed with. And I, and I think that kind of little spark is not something that's easily like recreatable, you know? Um, So I, I just feel like, like, you know, the universe was like in my in my favorite. If Jesus was a rock star, you know, your your track, of course, it's out. Uh, album coming. I don't want to say the soon word, but soon is next year or something like that. You mm-hmm. know, uh, what else do people need to know about Kim Petras? Um, I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I just honestly <laughs> just like I I'm just so grateful to be here. I just like I'm really grateful that people connect to my music at all like I just always you know felt like I was kind of a weird pop nerd and just you know no one would listen to the stuff that I make and I'm just so glad that there's people out there who believe in me and that I can be a part a part of a like magical song like Unholy and uh yeah and I just want you to know that if you work really hard you can you know you can do it and if you just believe that you're good at something like Keep believing it and keep working on it, and uh, you never know. You never know. Thank you for hanging out. Stars might align, girl. I want my daughter. <laughs> oh my daughter! My daughter's fourteen, and she's doing kind of what you did, like writing songs and mm-hmm. and notes. And dad, listen to this. Aww. And uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna take what you said. Just just keep encouraging. I guess it's just yeah. the thing, right? Keep just keep keep going, right? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Like I, you know, definitely encourage everyone to just to like follow their passion and their dream. Like it's such a magical thing to have a dream like in life you know it's like not everyone's that lucky either you know some people don't know what they want to do and uh that's a good point yeah for sure and like i'm happy because it's kind of like the thing that led me through my life even and that kind of ties into like jesus is a rock star and all of that stuff like um uh, you know i didn't really know where i fit in but like in music I, i did i did fit in you know so that's like never changed and that's yeah why i love it so much and i'll never stop i'll be like 80 Smoking a cigarette with a cane, like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be awesome. <laughs> Kim, I, 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 I was a fan before. Met you briefly back in the day. I, mm-hmm. I don't know, a couple of years back before yeah. pandemic. Uh, I'm just more of a fan now. I mean, oh, just thank something you so about much. you. God Almighty! All oh, right, thank you for end, having me. Th- thank you. At the end of every interview, Kim Petras fist bump to make it official. Give me yeah. a little. Bang!